If you drill a three-bolt pattern into an equilateral triangle, will it equalize perfectly? We will find out by drilling yet again more holes in my poor patio on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my backyard. Uh, a few episodes ago, we did a test with lag bolts in grass in a park to test if four bolts equalized, if you put the center bolts further back, if they equalized how far back, dynamic ropes, static ropes, BFKs, sliding axes, we tried everything. At the very end, I was wondering why we used four bolts. Because one bolt technically is strong enough to hold a high line five times, five times the strength, that's a five to one safety ratio, and two is redundant, and three is overkill, which is great. But sometimes four seems like too much. It takes more time, costs more money, and it leaves more stuff on the cliff for everyone to have to look at. So, uh, I discovered that an equilateral triangle, this being the furthest back bolt for our slack line going this direction, is what gave us the best automatic equalization when we did a sliding X. And that does help when you're tying a BFK to have something that automatically equalizes so your legs aren't fighting against and your knot is not fighting against what naturally wants to occur. So we're gonna put these holes in my patio here. We're gonna do a couple configurations and test different kinds of ropes. I'm gonna do a few fun ones and we're gonna find out if this actually is true an equilateral triangle is our best bet. So you can see that our slack line is going this way and the concept that we base all this on is the most directly in line sees the most force and the ones closest see the most force. And this cancels out the two concepts because these are closer and this is most in line. So what we have here is a 12 inch space between this and this one with a slack line intersecting it at six inches perfectly and this is 12 inches and this is 12 inches. So that is the same size legs on either side of this triangle right here. And we're gonna build a sliding X and a BFK to see if every single leg is pulling on these evenly. Okay, so we're gonna use uh, Simon's dynamometer as the master point. And in order to orientate everything properly, I have to put things like this on here, which is fine. And then we have our three dynamometers up here. The distance between here and here is the same uh, when I use this red shackle. I don't have to orientate anything because this has a swivel, but I do have to use two here in order for this to sit flat. Now, before we get started, let's go into the garage and test our dynamometers real quick. We're gonna show you on this slack snap machine that the dynamometers are all reading the same. So what we have here is the big dynamometer that we use for breaking big things. And then we have Andy Lewis's dynamometers. He lent me for these kinds of projects. And Simon Lee from Pure Slack Lines lent me this one and another one from Andy and mine. Did you know if you take it over 20 kilonewtons that it reads over, but it still reads accurately? That's just frustrating. Anyways, uh, let's pull on this to find out if they all pull even. Point six three, four point six eight, four point six six, and four point six eight. I think that is super good enough. We're back in the backyard. We have a sliding X, pretty standard normal sliding X, and we are going to come over here to my awesome A-frame, and we're going to just yank on that little tiny tree. I hope it comes out because then I won't have to uh, uh, do it later. Okay, we've got 2.35 at the master point, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. Oh, nothing's easy. That's literally twice as much force as these are seen. Now, a lot of people bring up, I really just want to bring this up right now, that... Um, 
These strands aren't crossed over right now. You can see how they are sitting. But when the center one, the one, they, they go around and around and around, but then when this strand comes back to that one, it can cross over these. But you gotta understand, it's a sliding X. It moves. Too hard to hold the phone and shake this. Anyways, it's 2.1, 0.5 and 0.7. If I push it that way, I can get that to 0.8 and I can get that down to 0.5. This moving back and forth can really change the force on those, but it has the ability to make its adjustments because it's a sliding X. On a high line, you're bouncing, you're moving, you're walking, you're surfing. This will equalize evenly on these. The friction right here does not prevent those from doing their job. Now our center bolt is seeing twice the force as these guys. These are about nine inches apart this way and the mass points, that's about 11 inches right there. Um, I'm going to shorten up a smaller soft shackle on this guy and see if that changes anything. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how far back this bolt has to go before it stops seeing twice the load these are. Now, bolts can handle, if you've got four or five kilonewtons on the anchor, this is seeing half of the master point. A bolt can handle two, three, or four kilonewtons all by itself. It's not a problem. But if you're dealing with cam anchors or bolts and shitty rock, or you're putting on really high forces for space nets and some rope swings, it matters. So it's just really good to understand what your anchor is seeing. Okay, we're reset. We're at two kilonewtons. 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.86. So it's still higher. They're about 14 inches away this way, and we're still 9 inches this way. Um, let me put another bolt way back there, uh, since I already have the hole, and see if we can get this sliding X to equalize. Okay, I set it quite a bit further back. 2.12 on the master point. Those are the same. That's cool. And uh, it's still seen more. It's seen almost half the load. I don't know. Not half the load. A little bit less. It's still more than these guys. It just shows that you really want your center bolt further back than you think. Or if you have four bolts, you'd want the two bolts back there to be further, pretty far back. Um, I don't have any more holes. Oh, should I put a hole right there? Yeah, for science. So I put the bolt much further back now. And fixie removable triplex bolts are not that removable. Anyways, we have 2.57. These are both 0.7. So I like where those are sitting. And this thing's really, really long at... 0.98 so it's still higher not by too much like not not by much at all I'm not that worried about it but it just shows that that center bolt really takes quite quite a load uh, this is a canyoneering rope so it's pretty damn static let's switch it out for a dynamic rope and see how much of a difference we get so this is switched out with dynamic rope and this is a 9.2 millimeter sterling nano. If you want to look up how stretchy it is, go right ahead. 2.5 kilonewtons. 0.8-ish, 0.9-ish. So those are even enough. And 0.3. Wow. All right. So let's, uh, let's go back to this bolt, which is how we would normally bolt because having a bolt that far back is a little weird. Okay, we moved it back to our equilateral triangle, and we have 1.755 at the master point, 0 0.48, 0 0.45, 0 0.44. That is pretty cool. Now, the downsize to a dynamic rope is it's not as strong as a static rope, not as abrasion resistant. It stretches, which is great, but if it's not padded, which everything should be padded, it's going to oscillate over an edge a lot more, and it could cut through. Now, it's not likely. And if you were to put five kilonewtons on here, 
So let's say three times that amount, okay? You put three times the amount on here, that's only 1.5 kilonewtons on each pair of ropes. A dynamic rope is plenty strong for a high line anchor. So now I shorten this up quite a bit because I love ratcheting apparently. 2.1, 0.6s, and 0.76. That's pretty damn close. This distance between here and those are about 30% eh, of what they were in the last test. Now we're gonna make it really long and put the master point about like right there. Okay, now the master point's like two or three times further than it was. Uh, it's at 2.4 all the way up here. Um, those are about the same at 0 0.59, 0 0.63, and then our middle one is 1.04. Um, interesting, it's not quite double, but the further away we get from it, the uh, less even they are. Okay, same configuration except I moved that bolt. Um, I didn't move the bolt. I moved the dynamometer to right there. So, our master point is 2.5 kilonewtons. And we are basically at 0.9 on these and at 0.5 on this. Now, that's a long, that's a long leg. It better be less force than those side ones. But let's try a BFK in this configuration and then I'll move it back up to uh, that bolt right there. And we'll do some BFKs with the dynamic and the static rope. Just in case you're curious how I tie this BFK. To take these strands here, this one is the tail, this one is this tail, and I pull as evenly as I can, grab all of that, really feel it, and then tie my BFK. Now, if you can do an overhand, but if you have the rope, you can do a figure eight, which makes the knot radius bigger and in theory stronger, but we shall test that in slack snap one of these days when I'm not trying to equalize my damn bolts. Anyways, let's find out if that equalizes. We have a BFK with the middle leg super long, 2.4 kilonewtons. Our BFK is a figure eight, and our sides are 0.8 and 1.1. And all the way back here is nothing. It's literally, is seeing nothing so that's interesting let's move that one up to our equilateral triangle bolt a fun little side note is if you have the tails sticking out of the back side of your bfk instead of tying a fisherman's or figure eight right there and then doing it this does require more rope so if you're limited on rope you would have to tie a knot there and then do your bfk but since i have obviously plenty of rope here what you can do is tie something like this on the longer tail. And then you could be clipped to it when you are working near the cliff edge. Now it's not ideal to be pulling the tail that direction, but it's better than working near a cliff edge unclipped in. Because you don't want to be tying and untying your leash when the cliff edge is literally right here. Uh, if you can be just clipped in, put a permanent beaner right there, and then people can just clip it to their belay loop while they're messing with the leash to stay safe all the time. So here's our BFK with our equilateral triangle with our dynamic rope. And we have at a master point 2.6. Our BFK, you can criticize that all you want. 1 and 0.8 on the sides and 0.6. Now, that I feel is not going to kill anybody. That's fine. Uh, BFKs don't equalize super well without playing with them a lot. Without dyn dynamometers, you would never really be able to figure it out. But what I like about these is you don't need whoopee slings. These strands are isolated. If this were to get cut, these two would be sharing the load without any extension whatsoever. This right here is all you need for an anchor. And we are now going to test the same BFK and the same bolt pattern with the same rope, but with the knot really far away, like it would be rigged at GGBY. So I moved the BFK further back with our equilateral triangle over there. Our master point has 2.36 kilonewtons. Our sides are not too bad there. Those are 0 0.6, 0 0.7. 
and right there is 0.7. So that is pretty equalized, especially for a BFK. And maybe the stretchiness of this dynamic rope on all those legs helps with that. Um, with all the weird results we get, I really don't know. But now we shall switch to static rope and test a few BFKs there. So here's our BFK with our canyoneering static rope that has virtually no stretch. Our master point is sideways at 2.7 kilonewtons. Our side dynos are pretty close at 0.9 and 0.7. And our back bolt here is 0.9. That, that people is a strong anchor and redundant. I'd whip on that. So this is my BFK as long as I can make my 10 meter static rope I have here um, with, I tied a figure eight just for simplicity for everyone here. And then an overhand instead of a BFK. Um, the, the master point is 2.6 and 0 0.5, 0 0.6 on the sides. That's pretty even. And then double right there, 1.2. Um, it's just a crapshoot, it seems like. So this one is a super long BFK with a static rope. This is a sterling 9mm HTP static rope. I think it has about 10% stretch. If you get to 10 kilonewtons, which you're not going to. The setup I have here are the endless tails, where the tails come out of the backside with a figure eight. Now, if you are climbing, you're trying to go light, and you're trying to reuse parts... A trick you can do is use a jumper, which is what this is called a jumper. So you have that tail, and you tie your figure eight. And I recommend you tape it closed if it's not going to be tight, but it's not going to come undone, and you have no rope on rope abrasion going on here if it's just jiggling. But you can pad those if that makes you feel better. So um, what is this, you ask? This is the backup line. If you're trying to do just like Mathis Crest in Yosemite, where you want to try to reuse a rope you already have. And that is a great way to build your anchor and have your backup as the same thing. Hold on a minute. Let me clarify something for the Dyneema trolls. Yes, I have categories for you guys. So, rope on rope is bad. Let me explain. This is really bad, okay? It's going over the same spot. So, like, if you were to repel off this, you'd probably die, okay? But, if things are not moving, this is, has a coefficient of 0 0.04, same as Teflon. It just has no friction, okay? When you put it on a sew-in loop, a sew-in loop is not moving. Even if it's like uh, the backup, that's not going to ever cut through the Dyneema. Um, if you feel worried that the noose is going to come off, it never has on me, and it, I've never seen anything come close to it, you could tape it. You can put something through here. You can do a lock stitch thing. There's so many ways to make sure it's super bomber if you're worried about it. But that, there's no abrasion. Just because ropes, touching a rope is fine. You do tie into your harness, right? Your harness is a rope. Your leash is a rope. Rope on rope is not bad if it's not moving. So, back to the figure eight. This is not oscillating. It's a knot. It's not going anywhere. This will not cut through the Dyneema. So uh, just know when rope on rope is bad and when it's okay so you can go lightweight. So what's the force you ask? We got 2.314 kilonewtons at the master point. Right here we have 0.4 and 0.8 and 0.9. So the two left bolts are seeing the most force, the one on the right seeing half of what the other ones are, but that is super good enough. Uh, everything's really bomber. You can do this with a dynamic rope as well, including the little jumper trick we have here for the backup. Now, you do have to be careful. If you, you, if you are using a dynamic rope for a backup, you have to realize that you are going to fall pretty far. So you have to make sure you're high enough above the ground in order to use a dynamic rope. But otherwise, you use a static rope because it's stretchy enough to absorb your backup fall without you decking. Okay, I am done tying BFKs and ratcheting things down. Um, I think I've beat up this subject enough. Things don't equalize perfectly, but that's okay. That's the conclusion. If you're in a really sketchy situation, uh, you better have more than three points anyways. You can build three three-point anchors and BFK those if you're on like 
really crappy rock or all oh, they're all cams or something but uh, it's just good to understand all this if you are building an anchor what's going on internally with all your ropes a few more points to take into consideration some rabbit trails we can follow later is you don't always get to choose where you put your bolts sometimes the rock has to tell you where to put it depending where the edge is if you find hollow spots if there's things in the way so if you get a choice an equilateral triangle is ideal on a flat surface but as soon as you put it on the middle of a wall that changes everything and that's a rabbit hole we can chase later since we discovered there is no such thing as a perfect bolt pattern despite the clickbait video title that i have therefore you shouldn't highline